Hello and welcome to the last tackle inside England because that's what we're going to do for the next six weeks. We're going to go inside the England camps of the men's, the women's and the wheelchair in the most inclusive World Cup ever. And I'm delighted to welcome to the first show is the uh, captain of the Canberra Raiders. He's part of the 24-man England squad, Elliot Whitehead. And we've got a last tackle regular in Adrian Morley. He played in two World Cups, put the England shirt on 23 times, put on the Great Britain shirt 30 times as well. Uh, gents, thanks for coming. Elliot, first of all, how's camp? Yeah, mate, it's been really good. Look, uh, I only landed um, the last Tuesday in um, England from Canberra, but it's been really good. You know, we had a good uh, result against Fiji and the boys are full of confidence and uh, energy going into the, this week against Samoa, so it's been really enjoyable so far. We're at Robin Park. This is where Wigan train, and uh, the facilities are fantastic, aren't they? Yeah, they're fan fantastic. It's the first time I've ever trained here, and I was just speaking to some of the other boys how good the facilities are. It's like probably up there with some of the best in the country. Like it's got everything that you need, recovery-wise and um, performance-wise. So it's really good. And how are things? Because you know, I know you're only just a week into it, but it's going to be a long old camp, isn't it? Are you all getting on? You're yeah. having a bit of a laugh as well? Yeah, and I think that's the main thing, you know, you come on tour and there's a lot of people from different clubs and stuff and, you know, you need to get on to enjoy it and, you know, so far we've, we've made it enjoyable and everyone's getting to know each other, so the more weeks we go into it, the more people get to know and the more comfortable they'll be around each other, so, yeah, it's been good, like I said, so far and um, we're just looking forward to getting playing against tomorrow now. Because you're all staying in a hotel together as well, aren't you? Yeah, we're all staying at the Worsley Marriott, so... Um, we're on top of each other a lot. We're playing darts a lot. I'm probably best at darts at the moment. Right, but, yeah. yeah. Right, right. 100, interested. 180 a few times, but <laughs> nah, not, right. I'm not that good. But no, nah, it's been really good, like I said. And you know, um, you know, um, as conditioners and as um, staff, they're, they're making sure we've got stuff on to keep us occupied and not get too bored around the hotel. I didn't realise I was sat next to the Phil Taylor of Rugby League. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Moz, do you miss being in camp? Oh, I do. Uh, th this time of year, especially, you know, out of everything you can do in Rugby League, playing for your country is, is, the, uh, is, is the highlight, without a doubt. And also to play for your country in a World Cup on home soil. I don't think it gets much, much better than that, really. And uh, just listening to, to, to Elliot there, and uh, I'm getting excited for him. You know, it's uh, very, very... Uh, it's mouth-watering that this World Cup is going to be the biggest, most inclusive ever and uh, hopefully it's going to be a, a massive shot in the arm for Rugby League and uh, you know, let's hope England can go all the way. I've known you for a long time and obviously you won the Grand Final in Australia, you've won the Grand Final uh, in this country as well, the only Brit to win the Grand Final, final in Australia and over here. You've always said though, the proudest moment, you've won Challenge Cups as well, but the proudest moment was either pulling on the England shirt or the Great British shirt. Oh, without a doubt, it was, uh, it was amazing, you know, when you line up with the, with the best players uh, in the land, uh, representing your country and you sing the national anthem, all the hairs on your neck stand up and it's, uh, it's very hard to put into words, but uh, without a doubt, it's, it's the best thing I did in Rugby League. I was fortunate to do it for a long time and many times, but Still wasn't enough for me. I wanted, I wanted more and more, and uh, you know, just listening to to Elliot, very excited for him. And uh, you know, the squad have got a fantastic opportunity now, and uh, yeah, I uh, wish him all the best. I really do. And you've obviously played in a World Cup final, which we'll touch on. Do you feel that when you're putting the shirt on? Like most yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's the, probably the pinnacle of anybody's rugby career. You know, to pull that jersey on for your your home nation, and you know, I get the chance to do it again come Saturday. Hopefully, if I get selected. Um, but yeah, um, it's always a proud moment. You know, it's um, like he's like Moz said. It's probably my proudest moment too. Like, um, you don't get any better than that. You know, I've I played in NRL Grand Final as well, and you know, playing in that World Cup Grand Final meant a lot more to me than playing in the NRL Grand Final. So yeah. Well, we will look back at the uh, 2017 World Cup final, of course, uh, five years ago. But first of all, let's hear from Sean Wayne ahead of the opener against Samoa at Newcastle on Saturday. Very excited. Um, can't, I can't wait to get started with the game on, on Saturday and really looking forward to it. Um, it's been better than what I expected working with this group of talented players. And when I wrote the 24 out, um, I did think to myself, this is a good team, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and then when I got them out there to train, it was just a different level of, of session because the, your players are just that good. A standard in training, the detail of um, how they behave off the field, um, the respect for things and they've just, uh, this is Wiggins club 
I know that they've just left the dressing room in uh, immaculate condition, and people might think that's nothing. To me, it's everything. Um, you know, the respect they have, and when it comes to the game time, um, we're going to have 17 really, really competitive players out there. Yeah, we've had, we've had conversations all the way through lockdown and, and, and different Zoom meetings, and we swapped ideas. So I, I did when we, when we all joined uh, up in camp. I did feel like I knew him really well, um, but then message, messages which I've, I've tried to instil over the last few years, um, the players get it, you know, and I'm not talking about how we play, I'm all about behaviours off the field and, and being a complete England player and, um, and fair play to the lads, they showed me a lot of respect and, and they're, they're doing what I'm, what I'm asking, so and I couldn't ask for any more. Uh, they're, they're a really, really good team. Um, but what, a, what a game to start, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really confident with my England lads and and we're playing against, you know, some of the best in the NRL. I mean, you look at the 17 they they put out; it's very, very strong. But Marley was strong, and it's the first game of a massive World Cup, and it it just doesn't get better. Uh, Sean Wayne, there. Right then, he's been waiting a long time to look after you lot. You've done lots of zooms, haven't you, and messages and stuff like that. So, what's it like to be finally to be, to be together? Yeah, it's been great, mate. Look, like you said, he's he's always been in contact with us over the COVID period and. Especially with the Australian boys, we didn't ever get the chance over to come and play for him yet. So there's a few of us that have come over now, and we're looking forward to working with him. He's he's very passionate, and you know he's he bleeds he bleeds in for England, and you know he's, he showed that he he's not leaving no um, stone unturned. He's making sure we get all the best recovery, the best prep, the best facilities like here at Wigan, and making sure everything's ready for us to to put the, the performance we need to come the weekend. Can, can you understand him? That's the question, though, because uh, I bet the Australian-based players, I bet they struggle to understand his, uh, his thick Wigan accent. How do you go? Nah, I'm not too bad. I yeah, think, right. you know, I think I, I've had I had George, um, Sutty and Batty over. Oh, Batty's from Bradford, but he's got a Wigan accent, but they were in Canberra, so I'm pretty used to it. But yeah, he's been great, you know, he's, He's a, he's a tough old man, but you know he knows when to have a bit of fun as well. So he's been good, yeah. From the outside, it looks like he's a workaholic. Yeah, well, and it's like, real attention to detail as well, hasn't he? Well, like I said, he don't want to leave any stone unturned. He wants to make sure everything, every box is ticked, and he's done everything to make sure we perform come the weekend. And you know, so far he's doing that, but he's also making it enjoyable. And you know, for for me, that's the the best thing about him. He's making it enjoyable and making us want to want to work hard for him. And um, we've done that over the last two weeks so far. Um, Moz, could Sean be the difference? Because obviously a lot of people are not talking about England, but Sean's passion for England can give his squad an extra few percent, can't oh, it? I, I think so. I mean, uh, everyone respected uh, Wayne when he was coaching Wigan, and uh, you know, arguably he got the best out of every Wigan team he coached. And let's hope he does that the same with uh, with England. But Elliot mentioned very, very passionate guy, and you know, when you're playing international level, you know, your, your fitness is always there and your skills are always there and, and the game plan's always there, but there's just a couple of little percent which possibly could be missing it. It could be, you know, Sean Wayne provides that with his, uh, you know, inspirational talks and his just passion for the game. So, uh, speaking to the boys, they all love the way he coaches and, and you know, love him as a, uh, the way he goes about his business. So, uh, fingers crossed he could be the X Factor, yeah. And with the time difference, you must have been getting messages sometimes in the middle of the night from him, was you? Yeah, I'd be waking up to um, some messages from him and stuff. And obviously the um, video guys as well, they always used to send videos of the training sessions or, or the all-star games. And we'd have to watch through that and make sure to see how when he wants us to play. And um, yeah, they'll make sure we got the information. So when we turned up for the World Cup, we were ready to go. So although you've been the other side of the world, you've felt part of it, have you? Yeah, definitely. Look, like you said, he, he never left us out. He always made sure that we got them videos or uh, the information that we needed. And um, yeah, like we said, we, we turned up and we fell straight into what, what he wants. So it's, it's been good over the last two weeks. Well, let's turn our attention to the opener. And it's a tough opener at Newcastle on Saturday to kick off this fabulous <coughs> World Cup. England will play Samoa. Let's hear from the uh, Samoa coach, it's Matt Parrish. So when the draw came out, England first up, obviously, in England, was it a sense of excitement and then wanted to take that game on or would you rather have had a, a few games down the line? No, nah, um, excitement. Obviously, um, we've been waiting a long time for the game, but it's exciting to be uh, playing at a, at a wonderful stadium like St James Park and it's exciting to be playing a wonderful team like England. You might be the most talked about team at this tournament, apart from England, certainly over here 
the, the level of talent that you've been able to call upon for this squad is a, a, a squad that can really go deep into this tournament, isn't it? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> but, you know, talk, you know, talk doesn't equate to results. And, you know, we, we need to keep working hard at training, you know, which we have. Um, we need to get some combinations going and then build from there. But I've got no doubt, whatever we do this weekend, we're going to build on, you know, for the rest of the tournament. And how's the preparation been in terms of conversations and meetings with the players before camp and then now you've got them all, all together? It's been, it's been fantastic. Uh, the, the boys have been unreal. Coaching staff's been first class. But, you know, obviously having our first session, full session this morning is tough, you know, when you, you know, six days or five days out from an opener. But, you know, we're excited and we're looking forward to the, you know, next Saturday night. Because of what the international calendar has been for the last few years, you've not got a, a huge amount to go on in terms of video review of England and the other teams in the group that you might come up against. How, how difficult has it been to prepare for this tournament, given that so little international football has been played? Oh, well, it's obviously not ideal, but we had a mid-season test in June where we got together. But then, um, you know, I think we've only got seven players from that squad in, the, in this team. But we're certainly strengthened from that. And, um, you, know, you know, our preparation hasn't been ideal, but I've got no doubt throughout the tournament we'll do, we can build and, and put in, do something special. It's going to be an intense atmosphere in that opening game at St James's Park. How much of a bonus and a benefit is it to be able to call upon eight players who just played in the grand final and will be very used to that kind of cauldron? Oh, I, I, that's one positive to take out of it. But again, not having them at trainings, not 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 a, very positive. But yeah, obviously they played a week and a week and a bit ago and in a very very high quality game. So. You know, they'll have the fitness and toughness on their side, but you know, we need, we need everyone on board for us to play well to get a result. And lastly, the, the word opportunity keeps coming up around this World Cup. This is probably the strongest Samoa team we've ever seen going into a World Cup. How much of an opportunity is there to inspire the next generation so that these Samoa teams are stronger and stronger in years to come? Well, I think um, these guys that represent Samoa in this World Cup have got a, a fantastic opportunity to, you know, to inspire Samoan young players, men and women around the world. And, you know, we, you know to make Samoa, rugby league the number one sport in Samoa, you know, is a goal that could happen if we can play well on this comp. And I know the boys are, are up for that challenge and are certainly looking forward to that. Well, well best of luck. Not too much luck against England, but uh, enjoy the tournament. <laughs> Good on you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. So it's Samoa versus England at St James's Park. Right, before we talk about Samoa, first of all, Looking forward to playing. It's going to be a packed St James's Park, and the atmosphere is fantastic. Yeah, look, I think they've sold up nearly 45,000 tickets, so it's going to be a massive atmosphere. But I'm sure there'll be 44,500 there cheering us on. So it's going to be a hostile environment for tomorrow. But looking forward to getting up there and playing um, in front of that crowd. I've played there in the Magic Weekend in Super League before, and I know how it feels. So I'm looking forward to playing there again. And you know a lot about this smell inside because they had what eight in the grand final. Yeah, they've got a lot of quality players. Um, you know, I think they had, I think most of their backline played for Penrith in the NRL Grand Final and won that over the last two years. So, um, you know, they're gonna, we're gonna have to do a good job on them and make sure we can limit their yardage carries and making sure um, we get the bigger boys like Junior Barlow and uh, Josh Papaliti um, going back and turning and, and getting hopefully a bit unfit. So yeah. Have you spoken as a group that everyone seems to be tipping Samoa? I think it's going to be a tough start for England. I mean, you've got a, 20, a good 24-man squad. Yeah, we definitely have. And, you know, I believe and I'm confident with the squad that uh, Wayne has picked. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about some, some OSI because they've got some quality players that have probably pulled out of the, the bigger, bigger nations like Australia to play for Samoa. But um, I'm sure if we stick to the game plan that we've got set, um, we'll get over the top of them. But it's not going to be an easy ask. Like I said, it's going to be a tough ask. And, um, but I believe we've got the the quality in the squad and um, the game plan to get the win. Uh, Moz, start with Samoa, uh, then it's France at Bolton on the 22nd and then Greece and Sheffield on the 29th. Would you prefer it the other way around or do you think this is good having the toughest group test at the beginning? hit the ground running? Well, you know, if you would have asked Sean Wayne that, he would have said he's not bothered and, uh, you know, I just think you're going to have to play these nations at some point, so why not, why not play it the first game, you know? Uh, you mentioned the, the big crowd, so that will be a massive boost for the for the English team. And listening to Sean Wayne in the uh, in the press conference, they're talking about Samoa. He said, "Look, we are going to 
worry about them to a degree, but I want to concentrate on England as well. So people are not talking about England, but he's very, very confident in the in the squad and the team he's gonna he's gonna put out. So I, I, I can't wait for Saturday. It's going to be a great test, very tough. But you know, uh, listening to Wayne and he's confident in the in the squad, and uh, so am I. Are you confident you can hit the ground running? I mean, you had a great warm up game against Fiji, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. We'll take a lot of confidence out of that. You know, we, we had some good stuff we can take out of that, but there were also some things that we have to fix up. And, you know, we'll look at that this week. But, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's going to be a different um, ask against Samoa come Saturday. But, uh, like I said, I believe the game plan that we have got set to, to beat them will work and um, we'll get over the top of them. The six of you in the NRL, let's talk about a, a few of them. Uh, what about Herbie Hip Farmworth? Yeah, he, he's a, he's a plays for Brisbane at the centre. He's, he's a quality player, you know. If, I think he brings that um, extra strike on the edge. He's, he's got good feet and he's, he's pretty quick when he can find a bit of space. So, um, yeah, he's looking forward to play against with him again at the weekend and um, hopefully you can get him some early ball and he can show what he can do. Uh, Dom Young was superb against Fiji. Yeah, and I think he's done that all year for Newcastle. You know, he's a big boy and he gets he gets uh, New, well, Newcastle on the front foot out of yardage and he showed that against Fiji for us at, come the weekend. So if he does get selected, I'm sure he'll be looking to do that as well. But there's Ryan Hall and Tommy Mack that are pretty strong coming out of yardage as well. So whoever, when he does pick for, um, to fill them two wing spots, I'm sure they'll, they'll be looking to get us on the front foot coming out of yardage. Victor Radley? He, he's a solid player and he's, he, he plays, plays hard and trains like he plays as well. So. Um, looking forward to pulling the shirt on again with him again. Um, I think he showed a little bit what he can do come uh, against Fiji, but I, I believe come the weekend against Samoa, he'll, he'll be a lot more aggressive and show a lot more intent. Um, so yeah. And you know Tom Burgess really well. I do. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, uh, just this, a good big is better than a good little, and uh, they don't come much bigger than Tom. Is uh, you know, is a, is, a, is a massive, massive human, but he, he can play as well. So uh, he's been around quite quite a while. So he's experienced Tom and. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for England to do well, I think Tom needs to step up, as do a lot of the other young lads. So, uh, you know, he's got big, um, big weight on his shoulders, Tom, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he likes playing under, under them conditions. And Luke Thompson? Yeah, um, he's been a bit quiet this year at Bulldogs, but, you know, I know what he can do. He's, he had a few injuries, but he seems like he's got over them now and he's f fully fit and firing. So he's a strong carrier of the ball. And, you know, with him and, like I said, Tom Burgess, if we can get them to go in at the big Samoan pack and getting over top of him, it's really going to help us going forward. And most obviously, you were at the Sydney Roosters. Can this experience of six players in NRL be a massive plus for this England oh, side? De definitely. In the um, World Cup? Yeah, definitely. The, it's, it's no secret that the NRL is is the hardest, you know, most intense competition in the world. So, you know, I think the more players we have with the NRL experience will only benefit the, the national side. And become agonisingly close in the last World Cup, uh, you know, getting beat 6-0 in the final. But from that team, you know, some world-class players have, have retired, and Sam Burgess, uh, James Graham and, and Sean O'Loughlin. So uh, we need to replace them guys, but it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for the youngsters in the squad to really Hold the hand up and say, you know, we're here on, on, on the international scene and uh, we're, we're here to stay. So, uh, looking forward to them boys getting a chance and, uh, yeah, let's hope we can go one better. Well, before we wrap things up, let's hear from the skipper, Sam Tompkins. Sam, you are days away from captaining your country at Rugby League World Cup. How, how's that feeling? Um, feels a little bit strange. You know, it's been a long time, long time coming, this, this competition. And, um, yeah, a really proud moment for me, um, you know, to... To lead my country in a test match, um, yeah, immensely proud. You had a, a watching brief on Friday night, but you must have been pretty pleased with the way that the boys went about their business against Fiji in that warm-up. Yeah, I, I thought the boys were impressive on Friday. Um, in what was some terrible conditions to, to win 50-0 was, was impressive. You've been in part of plenty of England camps and a, a few different England coaches. How does this one compare? Yeah, we're, we're only in the infancy of it, so um, at the moment it's all going well. Uh, you know, everyone's happy to, to be in camp. There's a real buzz around the, around the team hotel and just want to get going. And, you know, Sean, more so than any player, has been waiting a long time for this. You know, since he got the job, it's been nothing but cancelled games. So, yeah, excited to get going. It's going to be a massive occasion on Saturday when you walk out of St James's Park. It, it should be a packed house against a, a very, very good Samoa team. And what do you look into your experienced players that have got grand final, Challenge Cup final, NRL experience to kind of lead you through? Yeah, and we'll all be looking at our own game. You know, Samoa have got the, the strongest Samoan team they've ever had, which is clear, but 
um, forget that and concentrate on ourselves. You know, let's see what we can bring to this competition, and um, you know, hopefully, people after Saturday will see what England are about. You don't only have to speak to Sean Wayne for 30 seconds that he emanates that pride of, of, of leading his country. How much has he kind of translated that onto you guys? Yeah, he's clearly passionate about about the job that he's got. Um, you know, and he wants us all to be to be passionate and appreciate the opportunity we've got to pull on this special jersey. Um, you know, we, we can't take it for granted. And and Sean's a, Sean's you know a, a, a massive fan of the international game and, and always has been. So it's. It's his dream job, and, and he, he certainly makes sure we know about it. How big is the opportunity that is presenting itself to you in the next six weeks? It's a massive opportunity. We've got a really good group. And we've got a home, home World Cup. You know what? What a, what a chance to to boom rugby league in this country. Um, you know, there's a, there's a certain pressure on us for that because I feel like this. You know, could we go on and win a World Cup? And I think you know that that would inspire generations of rugby league players. Well, Sam, best of luck in going win the World Cup. Thank you. Cheers. Skipper Sam Tompkins. Uh, let's just wrap a few things up before we finish, Elliot. First of all, I think it's brilliant. It's the most inclusive World Cup. We've got the women's and the wheelchair as well. You lot are fully aware of this as well, aren't you? I'm proud to be part of it. Yeah, definitely. Look, and I think, you know, every, majority, I think every game's live on BBC, so it's going to be great for the sport and, um, you know, hopefully a lot, everyone in England can get behind us and show their support as well. So it's going to be great, like I said, but yeah. Do you feel like you're showcasing the game a bit? You know, terrestrial TV is still massive, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Look, and I think you know, I think it's a good opportunity for us to, you know, put rugby league back on the map. You know, I think I think it need I think it needs something like this to get it going again, and um, we'll be looking to do that. So yeah. And Moz, are, are you aware that rugby league is really in the spotlight and can really grow the game you love? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the fact that we've had to wait another 12 months for for the World Cup, I think. In a way, it's, it's uh, let the organisers organise an even better tournament, and you know, just just the opening game uh, to, to sell 45,000 at a non-traditional rugby league area in Newcastle. I think that's absolutely massive, and hopefully by Saturday we'll have a few more tickets sold. But it's going to be a great, uh, you know, first game spectacle. England are going to play the part, so we're all going to play the part, and obviously it's going to be an England win. Uh, but you know, that'll kickstart the, uh, the the World Cup, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. There's a lot of confidence in this camp, isn't there? You're not bothered what people are saying and writing you off. No, nah, definitely not. You know, I think in past tournaments I've played with England, we always get kind of get wrote off, and we seem to always do pretty well. So we'll be looking to do the same again this tournament. I think this is the most open World Cup we've had probably ever. You know, Australia. I'm not, not, not seeing the betting. in Australia. Probably will be favourites, but you've got Samoa, uh, New Zealand, Tonga, Us. England. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, any any one of them teams are, are going to put their hand up and say, yeah, uh, it's my World Cup, but uh, England have got their hands on it. England were an ankle tap away in 2017. Can you go one better this time? Yeah, 100%. Like I said, we're full of confidence and the belief in this squad that when he's picked, that um, we can get the job done. So. We'll be working. It's going to be hard, and it's going to be a lot of hard work. But we've we've all committed to buying in and making sure we um, work hard to get the results that we want. Well, Alec, thanks for no coming worries. in. Thank you for having really me. Really appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers, so, Moz. Good luck to England on Saturday and for the whole tournament and the World Cup. There's three trophies, 32 nations, and 61 unmissable matches.